Hey guys, it's Noms here. Before we get started, yes, this is a re-upload because after three months of uninterrupted, glorious, monetized, advertiser-friendly content approved by YouTube's own algorithm, bear in mind, all of a sudden YouTube just decided to have a change of heart and confirmed by one of Susan's own beta male bitch tards that this video should be demonetized and no longer eligible for monetization, crushing its viewership momentum in what is absolutely a form of censorship and rigging the system for the right thinkers, in what is widely known as YouTube's biggest bitch move. Demonetization without due process, or at least one that's actually worth a fuck. And even though I played by their rules, YouTube didn't want to see reason, so I decided, fuck em, let's do it all again. I'll repost it, it'll be approved as advertiser friendly by their own algorithm, yet again, and we can carry right the fuck on. In short, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube hates this video, which means, if nothing else, you're going to love it. Have fun! Okay, let me just state this right off the bat. Eowyn and Arwen from Lord of the Rings, Hermione Granger from Harry Potter, Disney's Mulan from 1998, Not the Hell Spawn from 2020, Lucy Hartfelia from Fairy Tale, Elizabeth Swan from Pirates of the Caribbean, and Padme Amidala from Star Wars. These are all some of my personal favorite characters in fiction. They are excellent characters who just so happen to be some of the best strong female characters ever written, in my humble opinion. Just thought I'd lead with that, just to squash the sexist pig comments from the bottom of the barrel of brainlet trash we're likely to encounter in the comment section going forward. You know, the same brainlets who say you can't comment on the quality and status of the MCU without having to watch every single one of their latest disposable dumpster fire releases. Yeah, I haven't seen Morbius and that's a pile of garbage. I haven't seen Suicide Squad in 2016 and that's a flaming pile of shit. And I haven't seen Ghostbusters 2016, and that movie is beyond shit. You can accurately infer a judgement based on the plot synopsis, movie clips, and of course reliable word of mouth, and let's not forget the trailers. Oh yes, those trailers that Marvel fanatics fawn over without even finishing the damn thing, while simultaneously saying that you can't judge the movie based on the same fucking trailer. Yeah, some logic. But fanatics don't deal in logic, only their precious fee-fees. Like I've said before, and I've said several times, they can't be bargained with, and they can't be reasoned with. Anyway, welcome back to the channel everyone, it's your pal Noms here, and this video is going to act as somewhat of a part 2 or continuation of my previous video. Because in my previous video I said I was done with the MCU, and make no mistake, that's absolutely still the case. I still haven't seen Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the latest MCU release, and I have no plans to. But as the video progresses, I will certainly need to make reference to it, since it's the latest and possibly best example of what's currently wrong with the MCU, and completely rotting the product root and stem. I previously spoke about the decline of the MCU being due to many reasons. Overexposure, a lack of overall substance, corporatism crushing creativity, terrible releases, an over-reliance on nostalgia bait and cameos, and an insufferable fanatical fandom culture surrounding it. Contributing to falsified hype trains built by mainstream media and YouTube theory cultists trying to prime an expired cow for rotten milk when the time comes. I was very pleased at the reception that my previous video received, relieved to see there were so many of you who were just as fed up with the MCU as I was, and based on the reception Doctor Strange 2 has received, at least so far, I think it's safe to say the video was pretty spot on. But there's one really huge reason why the MCU has been declining, especially in recent years, that I purposefully neglected to mention in my previous video. And this decline, in large part, is due to the forced political woke agenda that has been largely the source of the MCU's plummeting writing quality. All of the characters I mentioned in my intro, you'll notice I labeled them as characters first and strong females second. And that's exactly my point, because the problem is that used to be the case for female characters in the MCU, but no longer. See, back when the MCU started, there was a far more organic approach to character development. Characters weren't created to appease political correctness or some kind of feminist agenda. The characters were written to go on a journey where they would acquire strength, hope, regret, kindness, dread, intelligence, truth, 
All the characteristics that make characters relatable and an audience gravitate to them. The MCU, at least in Phase 1, had plenty of likeable, feminine, yet strong female characters. Sure, sometimes they were a damsel in distress, but being a damsel in distress doesn't make a character weak or pathetic, it simply makes them vulnerable, and a character's vulnerability is also one aspect that helps make them relatable. Pepper Potts was a damsel in distress at times, but she's also the one who helped Tony run Stark Industries, and protected him in other ways, like actively trying to prevent him from being his own worst enemy. She didn't need to put on an armored iron suit to be a strong character. After all these years, Tony still has you picking up the dry cleaning. I do anything and everything that Mr. Sark requires, including occasionally taking out the trash. Oh! Will that be all? Jane Foster was also a damsel at times, but she was also an established scientist driven by her own curiosity and ambition. She's also the one person who took the time to fundamentally understand Thor, who at the time was essentially the fallen god of thunder, and she was the person who helped Thor find his redemption to regain his power. Peggy Carter was a strong feminine army officer, but she had kindness, compassion, and perspective. She wasn't attracted to Steve Rogers because he was Captain America, she was attracted to his bravery. He was the weakest guy in the army, and the most unappealing guy on the dance floor, but he's the one she wanted to dance with. In fact, after Steve got his powers and she thought he was turning into one of the army's playboys, she turned off him faster than the Thanos snap. What do you think? Yes, I think it works. And finally, that brings me to Black Widow, who at the time was the lone heroine of the Avengers. Someone who captured the hearts of many fans who grew fond of her, and others who idolized her as someone to look up to. But she was far from perfect. She was undoubtedly the exception to the other three characters mentioned in the MCU in Phase 1. But unlike Pepper and Jane, she wasn't a damsel, and unlike Peggy Carter, she had a far more active role in combat and not to mention a lethal set of skills as an assassin. However, she had a very endearing charm about her. She was snarky, playful, funny, compassionate. Her long friendship with Hawkeye gave a very human center to the character, and she harbored a lot of regret for atrocities that she had committed in her line of work in the past. At least we assumed it was in her line of work, but this alluded to a very mysterious backstory for the character that many fans, including myself, wanted to see explored or at least referenced more and for Black Widow to be given her own solo movie that fans were clambering for to be made for a goddamn decade. Well, at least that was until we finally got it, and it turned out to be complete and utter shit. Oh, but there is a number of reasons behind why that happened as well, which I'll eventually get to. So what happened exactly? Where did this organic approach to character writing change? When did the agenda pushing start? And when did the quality of writing for particular female characters in the MCU plummet? To be fair, I think most of Phase 2 still seemed to be on the straight and narrow, and even introduced one of my new favorites, at least for the time, in Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, though that has since drastically changed, given how they've completely assassinated her character and turned her into a psychopath. The only real instance I saw the MCU push political correctness into one of their movies in Phase 2 was Iron Man 3, where the white male antagonist, Aldrich Killian, was nothing but a worthless, pathetic incel with one of the most pitiful motivations ever, and in addition to that, absolutely disrespected the shit out of Iron Man's source material and his arch nemesis, who was supposed to be the Mandarin and not this freak. My name's Trevor, Trevor Slattery. I am the Mandarin! On top of that, they couldn't even let Iron Man defeat his own pathetic villain. They had Pepper Potts, who was injected with that bullshit plot device serum, and who had no combat experience, they had her survive a fatal fall and come back to destroy his villain with ease. It's worth pointing out for this and many other reasons that Iron Man 3 is the worst MCU movie and my personally most hated one. Oh, don't get me wrong, Captain Marvel is god-awful and I'll get to it, but no, before people start playing yet again the sexist pig card, the MCU movie that I actually hate the most has a white male protagonist, so eat that shit. But that being said, as much as I'd like to blame this abomination of shitty writing due to forced political agendas, I'm pretty sure this was for the most part just Shane Black being an absolute fucking dumb cunt, which is just par for the course for that hack at this point. Truthfully, the first standalone MCU movie to suffer an enormous blow to its character writing due to forcing identity politics into the mix, 
was none other than Thor fucking Ragnarok. It's the first time probably since Iron Man 3 that I remember absolutely despising a character in the MCU. And that character is the woke disaster known as Valkyrie. Fucking Valkyrie. This obnoxious, rude, unlikable, cuntish Mary Sue that walks around with this insufferable attitude being a smug little bitch to absolutely everyone she meets, kills everyone without asking questions and with ease, subdues Thor the God of Thunder with a taser. Let me just reiterate that for a second. She tases the God of Thunder and somehow that actually works. Yeah, seriously, just fuck Thor Ragnarok, honestly. But I'm not done ripping into this bitch. She turns the Hulk into her own little child's plaything. And she bests Loki, the god of fucking mischief, in a hand-to-hand -hand fucking fight. And even subdues him, barely breaking a sweat, and she does this all while she's fucking drunk. The way you're meant to gravitate to this character is the fact that since she was part of Asgard's Valkyrie, all of her comrades actually died in a battle with Hela a long time ago, and somehow she managed to fucking escape. This is meant to be like this ultra hard hitting moment where you're actually meant to feel sorry for Valkyrie. Like I'm supposed to give a shit after this bitch has spent two hours alienating the audience from being able to like her. Because you see, the audience rightfully tends to hate when you bring in a new character that's just there to be a mouthpiece for feminism or woke political ideologies that only appears to be a strong female character by shitting all over the characters the audience actually loves. Instead of, you know, writing Valkyrie as an actual character, perhaps? See, you kinda gotta do that first before we can gravitate to her. Seriously, the only thing that would've been more on the nose about the agenda you were pushing with her is if she wore fucking rainbow garments. What's funny is they could have used Lady Sif from the previous Thor movies, who many criticized for being boring and forgettable, but in actuality, the first Thor movie and Thor The Dark World simply didn't put enough time into fleshing out the character. The opportunity for this did present itself with Ragnarok. It's just a shame the actress wasn't available for filming the movie at the time due to a scheduling conflict, but the way I see it, given who was in charge of the project, and what their agenda was, and what they were trying to push, Lady Sif dodged a fucking bullet because Kevin Feige showed no interest in wanting to put any effort into understanding the character and fleshing her out. So Kevin Feige and Taika Waititi took it upon themselves to bring in a new female character who this time they could race spend the shit out of, which is probably the most thought they put into the character, and ultimately that ended up being Valkyrie. It's also not surprising to me that she's also played by Tessa fucking Thompson, Essentially Hollywood's go-to girl for Wokonomics. And yeah, before likely many of you point out to me, they also race bent Heimdall. But that was just a casting choice with the best intentions since it was before the Woke infestation in the MCU began. And Heimdall was actually cast with a good actor being Idris Elba because Idris Elba is fucking amazing. The same cannot be said for Tessa Thompson. I wish I could say Thor Ragnarok was the only time she cucked Chris Hemsworth on screen and contributed to ruining a fucking IP. Oh, and on top of that, somehow they have Thor give Valkyrie the keys to the fucking kingdom of Asgard at the end of Avengers Endgame. Like she fucking earned any of it. Fuck you, Kevin Feige. But we're jumping a little too far ahead. I'll get back to Endgame, don't you worry. And this brings us nicely to the subject of MCU's first female-led superhero movie about a mysterious S.H.I.E.L.D. assassin struggling with her past who's sent on a top-secret mission that... <laughs> Nah, instead we get the remarkably unmarvelous Captain Marvel, who, you guessed it, is yet another Mary Sue character that the fans didn't care for nor wanted over one that had already earned their investment in Black Widow. Fans wanted a Black Widow movie because they liked the character, but the problem is that she contradicted the Kevin Feige narrative because a sizable chunk of Phase 3, and now ultimately Phase 4, has been dedicated to the narrative that, to quite simply put it, is called... Now it's their turn. Oh look, Marvel have decided to do their first ever female lead superhero movie. Uh, but that's already been done before. Not to mention the fact that Kevin Feige was shitting bricks after DC, for better or worse, beat them to the punch. Don't look now, but Marvel Studios has broken through the barriers of oppression and made the first ever black superhero movie with a person of color as their lead. Newsflash, that's already been done before. Decades ago, in fact and I might add, has been done far more fucking better. 
Seriously, Blade was awesome. And if there's one thing that might actually bring me back to the MCU, it's how much they are going to fuck up the reboot, which will likely be sold on a Wesley Snipes multiverse cameo or some shit. And make no mistake, this false narrative of now it's their turn and we did it first was one of the biggest selling points for each of those movies. But in the case of Captain Marvel, it's particularly egregious because fans were asking for a Black Widow movie for a decade because she was a well-beloved, strong female character. And actually, she was just a character. A character. On those grounds alone, she should have been the choice over Captain Marvel. But like I said, narratives, agendas, and all that. The first ever Marvel female-led superhero movie, uh, not really, but undoubtedly the first in the MCU, was Captain Marvel. Much to all of our fucking face palms. And what we ended up getting was a laughably uncompelling abortion. It was a feminist wet dream on Viagra, to put it simply. An irredeemably unrelatable Mary Sue who got her superpowers by taking what should have been a fatal blast straight to the face from the fucking Tesseract, survives somehow, and whose only obstacle in life to overcome is the supposed oppression from the patriarchy telling her she can't do this and she can't do that. Oh, and the climax to her journey, the part that's meant to make everyone fall in love with her, is just her taking off the zappy patch and deciding all of a sudden that she's strong and that she won't be held back anymore. Not that she ever was, because she was fucking photon blasting everyone in the face the whole fucking movie. But yeah, she just takes off the zappy patch, something that she could have done at any time, and this ultimately results in her becoming this all-powerful god, stronger than any Avenger, even Thor, being able to fly at light speed, breathe in space somehow, and decimate gigantic starships while laughing at her own unfunny jokes and woohooing like she was a fucking drunk chick at a rave. And if you don't believe me that the release of Captain Marvel wasn't just Kevin Feige trying to rewrite history at the last possible fucking moment, this isn't just from a meta standpoint because these fuckers had the nerve to try and tie her fabricated middle fucking name in as the source of Nick Fury's inception for the Avengers. A sad attempt to try and make the entire Infinity Saga revolve all around her, as if this was always planned to be the way things would fucking unfold. Despite the fact that Nick Fury had knowledge of Captain Marvel during the entire Infinity Saga and could have paged her at any fucking time. Big fucking yikes. And like I said, the Black Widow movie was shunned not only because they couldn't preach the message they wanted to about the all-powerful Whammon who started the Avengers apparently, since Black Widow was already an established character, but she was also a contradiction to the narrative that female superheroes were just now being taken seriously, that they are just now allowed to be depicted as strong and independent, and that they are just now being given their own movies and screen time. As the saying goes, those who preach the loudest are the most fake. And the only reason there wasn't a female-led superhero in the MCU, a movie starring Black Widow, a heroine that the fans had come to love and adore, and wanted for damn near a decade, the only reason that movie wasn't made in the MCU during phases 1, 2, and 3 was because of Marvel themselves. So please, don't defend the message Kevin Feige and his regime are preaching from their glass pedestal because they are gigantic fucking hypocrites, as most preachers are. And John Favreau, Joss Whedon, and Stan Lee accomplished what Kevin Feige is now trying to do, but it was done much better and far more organically a damn near decade ago before Captain Marvel ever existed in the MCU. And it's not a coincidence that this agenda has essentially gone into overdrive mode now that the late, great Stan Lee has passed away and has left his company in piss-poor hands with hack writers and politically driven morons who don't know how to create anything, as I'll soon get to, and ultimately have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Now, fans eventually did get the Black Widow movie they craved, except, wait, no they didn't, because it ended up being a pile of shit. But before I can get into that, we gotta take a pit stop at the climax of Marvel's Infinity Saga. That brings me to Avengers Endgame. Endgame achieved the kind of box office heights that would snap Scrooge McDuck's dick in half. Upon its release, it was initially almost unanimously beloved. Though as time has gone on, the reception has become somewhat mixed. Personally, I don't mind and even still enjoy Endgame quite a bit, despite its flaws. Yes, it has a lot of issues, and it's nowhere near Return of the King or Avenger the Sith as a climax, but it was 
what I would call a serviceable end to the Infinity Saga. That bid farewell to the two leads of the MCU, that being Iron Man and Captain America, who were sent off with dignity. At least, you know, for the time being, it is Marvel. Remember, they're coming back. You know they're coming back. That said, my biggest fear for Endgame was that Captain Marvel would show up, marry Sue the fuck out of Thanos, and ruin the movie. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I was expecting, especially with Stan Lee not being around to tempt the things at Marvel Studios. Thankfully, that didn't happen. <laughs> Though Captain Marvel did significantly lessen the tension when she showed up and instantly demolished Thanos' gigantic starship without a fucking care in the world, but despite that small subversion, <laughs> what I wasn't expecting from this movie was this scene. Don't worry. She's got health. Oh my god, my insides are on fire! Can any of you name any reason for why this is in the movie other than to preach? And to, I guess, foreshadow the scraps this franchise will have left once Endgame had concluded? And you wonder why fans, or former fans now, are calling Phase 4 the MCU. But to be fair, this girl power, femme vengers, or whatever the fuck you want to call it scene, isn't inherently bad in concept. But it comes back to what I was originally saying about what made female characters so great in the MCU in the first place, which is that they felt organic. Their characters felt organic. Their moments felt organic. Does this scene honestly feel organic to anyone with a sensible number of brain cells? No, it's completely out of place, feels completely forced, and it's about as far from organic as it could possibly feel, because like I said, and as many of you, if not most of you already know, this scene was only inserted to preach politics and nothing more. It's a damn shame that Black Widow, the female heroine fans cared the most about, was unceremoniously killed off moments before she could appear in this scene. Which, I mean, even though I don't like the scene, this was certainly a missed opportunity. And as I previously stated, she stood in the way of the now it's their turn narrative. But fret not, because fuckhead Feige, in his infinite lack of wisdom, said, don't worry, decade-long fans of MCU's longest-running heroine, I give you Black Widow, a two-hour dumpster fire giving you a piss-poorly put-together backstory for the character based off two fucking lines of Joss Whedon's Avengers that I and my shitty fucking writing team that wrote this flaming fucking turd, in 11 days, mind you, didn't understand in the fucking slightest. Just like Budapest all over again! You and I remember Budapest very differently. Dracov's daughter. Sao Paulo. The hospital fire. Barton told me everything. Sorry, it's after we just killed the character off, so there's nowhere for the story to go while your investment is at an all-time low and after you'd been asking for us to make it for a damn near decade. Yes, Black Widow was finally released after Avengers Endgame and it was released as an afterthought. It was half-assed, sloppy, creatively bankrupt. As I said before, they wrote it in 11 days, which should show you how little they gave a fuck. And yeah, this movie was essentially shat out as an effortless, shameless cash grab that only damaged the character and only served to destroy the character's mysterious backstory. Written once again with political correctness in mind and not continuity. As it should be noted, genius Feige told the writers to make sure Natasha didn't contact any of the Avengers or even Nick Fury for that matter because she, quote, didn't need help from the boys. In addition to that, this MCU installment gender swapped and ruined Taskmaster, and rather than focus on Natasha, opted to instead push Natasha's replacement, her sister, slash not sister, Yelena, who will essentially be the new Black Widow in the MCU going forward. Now personally, I didn't mind Yelena that much. The character did have some moments, but at the same time, her character was given a fuck ton of dumb shit to say and do, like making unfunny period jokes and spouting dumb lines while surviving point-blank explosions to the face. This was fun! No! <laughs> Similarly to Captain Marvel, most if not all the white male characters in Black Widow were treated like chumps or as irredeemable villains. The only halfway decent character moment is when Alexi is singing to Yelena her favourite song, and even that had to be pushed for by the actor and not the director's and certainly not Kevin Feige. Now that being said about the male characters being treated like trash, if you've watched my video on Black Widow, you'd know I didn't mind Drakov all that much. Yes, he was a dumb villain who made a lot of stupid choices, but while he was written to be a typical misogynist douche to appease the woke agenda, 
I also thought he was just a genuinely unlikable narcissistic prick, so at least he was a hateable villain and not an apathetic one, which means, at the very least, he was a better villain than they had in Iron Man 3 and Captain Marvel, although that really isn't saying much, is it? But as for Yelena, this bleeds into Marvel's latest trend. The pair bonding of established heroes with feminist sidekicks. The tag-along trope, if you will. Instead, it was the Black Widow and Yelena movie. Not to mention her whole fucking family who nobody cared about, but without a doubt, it was to set up Yelena as the new Black Widow, since Scarlett Johansson has all but left at this point. Hawkeye is meant to be about Hawkeye. That's why fans were interested, though granted a very small amount of fans. But what did Disney and Marvel give us? They gave us Echo and a dumbed-down kingpin featuring Hawkeye. Loki was meant to be about Loki, but instead we got Femme Loki featuring the actual one. Most recently, based on what I've heard, the MCU delivered American Chavez and Scarlet Witch featuring Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Which is not surprising in the least at this point. And just so you know that I'm not blowing smoke here, this isn't exclusive to the MCU. There are several other IPs utilizing this exact same trend because they are pushing the exact same agenda. For the sake of time, I'll just use two examples. The first being that of Star Wars The Bad Batch. See, The Clone Wars Season 7 came out in 2020 and was widely well received by many Star Wars fans, including myself. One of the main arcs of Season 7 was called The Bad Batch a group of clone soldiers with unique mutations that separated their characteristics and skill from the other clones in the Grand Army of the Republic. Fans were excited when the Bad Batch animated series was announced because they wanted to see the Bad Batch. That's what they were promised, and that's what they were sold on. But what Disney and Lucasfilm ended up giving us wasn't the Bad Batch, it was the Babysitter Batch. The Bad Batch were essentially the side attraction to a character called Omega, an ultra-smart, Ultra successful, ultra nice, ultra uncompelling, tag along female clone who was supposedly an unaltered clone like Boba Fett was, except for the fact that they, you know, just so happened to remove the fucking Y chromosome to fit their agenda. So, unaltered clone, you say, Disney and Lucasfilm? Yeah, go fuck yourselves. You altered the shit out of it. And yeah, as you can probably guess, Omega's like the center of attention and Basically, the entire show revolves around her instead of The Bad Batch. The other example is actually more recent. The Halo television series on Paramount+. Plus. This show is the worst piece of garbage I've ever seen. And here's three hours for those of you who are curious as to why that is. But the biggest problem this series has, other than actively ignoring and shitting on the source material, is the fact that it's supposed to follow the story of Master Chief, the actual main character. For those of you following along, care to take a guess as to what the series is actually about? Well, it's about this Asian bitch who no one's ever fucking heard of, has no fucking place in the Halo lore, was invented solely for this fucking abortion of a show, and who stars as the main character in Halo, a Quan story featuring Master Chief. Actually, scratch that, it features some random douche who doesn't bear even the slightest fucking resemblance to Master Chief. Yet another shocker. Like I said with the MCU, or as Phase 4 has been dubbed by many, the MCU, all these shows have the same agenda. They want to create, push, and force insert these characters into roles they have no reason for being in, and the reason this tag-along trope is used is because these writers themselves know these characters are garbage, and no one asked for them, and no one sure as shit would pay to see them unless they were attached to a beloved franchise or character that people actually do like. They're just mouthpieces for virtue signaling and meeting a quota for political correctness, and that is the crux of the issue. This is why the new characters, using the term very loosely here, these new characters are hollow, unlikable, terribly written disgraces. And this brings me to the last point I wanted to make, and this goes back to when I said that these writers aren't writers, they're activists, who are hired because of their virtues on the spectrum and nothing else. They're activists disguised as writers, and that's why they have absolutely zero creativity. So as activists, like I said, when they adapt a new character that isn't popular for political reasons, or create a new character for political reasons, or to appease an agenda, they use the tag-along trope, in the hopes that their new terrible character will become popular by proxy. But the worst and most unethical practice isn't the tag-along trope, it's completely bypassing it and just completely changing a well-renowned and established character that they did not create, whether it's changing them superficially, such as changing aspects of their appearance, 
to appease political correctness or changing them fundamentally, such as race or gender swapping them, as well as the character's motivations and personality to appease political correctness. That is absolutely despicable, and that looks to be exactly what the MCU is planning to do with the rest of Phase 4. And it looks like they're using the multiverse as some kind of pathetic crutch to make it happen. It looks as though Thor Love and Thunder will be the first blatant leap they take in that direction, and to illustrate my point, they're using Jane Foster, Thor's former love interest in the MCU, yet somehow she's worthy of wielding the Mjolnir hammer, and she has the power of lightning. But what is she called? Lightning Foster? No. Thunder Jane? No. Nope. She's Thor. They're calling her Thor, because the people who came up with this shitty idea couldn't create... So they instead just took the character identity and brand for themselves and their own woke ideology, but they're so far up their own ass, they feel like they are the ones that are revolutionizing the character and taking this in a stunning and brave, there I said it, new direction that supersedes what came before. But this time he, or in this case she, is better than she was before, which is why they can't just give Jane Foster the name of Thor. No, no, no. It's got to be bigger, better, and more powerful, which is why they are calling her the Mighty Thor, as if that wasn't already his own fucking nickname or title in the first place. Before people go on the defensive saying, duh, but this is what happens in the comics, duh. Two things. One, I don't give a shit about being faithful to source material that wasn't faithful in the first place. And two, by most, if not all accounts, those fucking comics suck anyway and are terrible because they place an emphasis on being woke and stealing characters instead of actually focusing on storytelling and creating them. As a matter of fact, this has all but completely infected the Marvel Comics industry, and now Brainlet Feige thinks bringing this into the MCU is going to somehow draw profit? Someone left a comment on my last video saying the MCU has become the definition of insanity, and he was absolutely right, because only an insane dumb fuck would look at what fans despise most about the direction of the MCU and the way it's heading, and say to themselves, hey, let's do more of that and think anything is going to change for the better, when it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Because as you know, the very definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different outcome. Good luck with that, dickhead. So let's finally, at long last, wrap this up, shall we? As this video's thumbnail so boldly outlines, the decline of the MCU and its female characters is not because these characters are women. Far from it, it's how these characters are being depicted. And the bottom line is that they aren't being depicted as characters anymore. Which is why their depictions no longer feel organic. And that is because they have become forced insertations driven by politics and virtue signaling and that's it. And that is the final reason why the MCU, at least in recent years, has been declining so rapidly, or at least that is the final reason for me as to why the MCU has been declining and why I'm done with it. I refuse to support tokenism, I refuse to support gender swap replacements for characters I've come to love and have earned my investment. I refuse to contribute to a fan base that supports this franchise, that's spearheading all these shameful practices for storytelling in order to push politics and woke messages in an attempt to brainwash the young and easily influenced. And it does please me to say that I'm not the only one, and there are millions who share this viewpoint. Which is why unless the MCU and Disney refuse to change their ways and go back to traditional storytelling, the MCU will continue to decline and decline until it's finally dead. And that brings me to the end of the video, and yes, I'm absolutely still done with the MCU, this doesn't change anything, nor does it contradict what I said in my previous video, as I did say I was still interested in talking about the industry and its decline, and this absolutely falls under that. One of the main reasons I decided to make this video separate is because I went out of my way not to mention what's been dubbed as the MCU in my first video because the MCU has far bigger problems that are not related to political agendas and woke ideology that I wanted to discuss first. This video isn't kickstarting a new series of anti-woke videos or anything like that, so rest assured that's not what this is, it's basically just a part two. And make no mistake, it's the final part, let me make that clear, the final part to why I'm done with the MCU. And make no mistake, now that I've gotten this off my chest, again, maybe with the exception of Blade, depending on how hard they fuck it up, I'm done talking about any new release of the MCU, nor will I support any future release with a movie ticket. And to the MCU stands who want me gone and to never talk about the MCU ever again, I promise you the feeling is mutual. It's so gratifying to leave you wallowing in the mess you've made. You're screwed. Thank you. Bye. But like I said in my first video, 
I'm not done talking about Marvel as a whole. There's plenty of stuff I'd love to make videos on, including movies from the MCU's Infinity Saga. And of course, you know, Star Wars, the Avatar movie that's coming out. There's plenty of projects I'm way more excited for than anything to do with the MCU. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments about what you think of the current state of the MCU. If you'd like, you can feel free to join my Discord server where we talk about pop culture, Marvel, movies, television, video games, and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Check it out at your leisure, and who knows, maybe you'll make some friends along the way. A big special thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters for all your contributions to the channel and to my work. If you'd like to become a patron, I've left a link to Patreon in the description. Or if you'd like to become a YouTube member, you can just hit the join button. And finally, here's one last thank you for staying till the end of the video. You are a legend, and I'll see you next time.